Climate Listening Project is a storytelling platform for conversations on climate resilience. So we hit the road to find out how farmers are talking about cultivating resilience on their farms and in their communities. 2% of us are farmers, 100% of us are eaters. Uh, we're all impacted by climate change. We've had uh, last year over 100 degree temperatures several days in a row, not used to 100 degrees maybe one or two days, but then back, but then it was like four or five days. So the temperature has been a lot hotter. Climate has always been variable. It will always be variable. And farmers, they've been able to manage that variability for decades and centuries. Now if we can harness that information and learn what are the ways that we can adapt in your specific location, we want to use that and we want to use that to help other farmers learn, okay, this is the practice that I used and uh, maybe it'll work for you as well. We try to put our eggs in a lot of different baskets. We spread our, our risks to weather and everything else out by doing a wide variety of crops over a wide period of the season. We are growing more crops under cover in greenhouses because that gives us a buffer against the weather. But in general, we have always managed for variable weather and that serves us well as we get ever more variable weather. I'm not a grass grazer. I'm a forager of crops. They're having this beautiful, lush, quality forage 12 months out of the year. The changes we made turning this into a very green place with a lot of diversity, both plant and animal diversity, building up the organic matter in the soil, uh, ceasing to be as reliant on fossil fuels, pesticides, chemical fertilizer, has had and continue to have a great impact. I'm not an evangelist and I'm not trying to get everyone to change how they farm. But I truly believe that if more people farm more like this, we would see less climate change. I know the decision will lie not in the hands of those farmers. The decision will lie in the hands of the consumer that makes demands on how they want their food grown. The discussion we're engaged in may be describing the definitive, the definitive challenge for humanity to decrease our consumption to reverse our expansion and to save a beautiful and abundant habitat for future generations. I don't have any doubt that people will continue to adapt um, and grow and learn um, in the face of, of whatever radical changes come along, um, but I don't think it's going to be easy. The future here is very exciting to me. You know, when I first started making the changes from commoditized, industrialized, centralized agriculture to this organism that we call white oak pastures, I, I thought it was a destination. I now see it as a journey. <laughs>